Let's talk about the run cam split before the dogs next door start barking when they wake up. All right, so I built these two quads specifically because I wanted to test and see if I could tell any difference between the latency of the split and a regular camera in the air. And this is this one's using a Runcamps uh, micro, and this one's using the split. Um, I'm not going to be going over like the actual physical use of the thing because there's plenty of videos on YouTube about that. You can watch plenty of them. The board. In terms of its its function, the board works perfect. The run cam split works exactly as intended as I was I would expect it to work. You plug the battery in, three seconds later it starts recording. You unplug the battery, the video is saved. It's solid. It's in there. The memory card slot is not the clicky slot, so it doesn't the memory card won't fall out when you're crashing or something. The camera has a metal case. The wire is long enough on the camera. It comes with a longer wire as well. So it's all good. They got all that functionality perfect. I didn't actually run into the card full issue just because I didn't fly long enough to get run into it, but it works great. There is one issue where you're not supposed to plug in the USB with the quad powered on because something will happen and something will burn out. So just make sure you, you unplug the power of your quad before you're plugging in the USB. Oh, also one other thing, if you have a flight controller that powers all your peripherals from the USB port, the camera will start recording when you plug it into the USB port to change any settings or whatnot. So now let's discuss the differences between these two and and what I actually felt. So this one is, uh, what is it, about 30, 30, 30 grams lighter, and it flies a little bit better, but not that much better. When I fly these two, my brain just has an easier time flying this one, and it's not because it's lighter and it performs a little bit better. It's just, I feel more in control. Like, three inch generally, to me, doesn't feel like it has much control, but when I fly this one, I feel like my brain is working overtime, and I'm, I'm physically tired after two, three minutes of flying this one. Whereas this one, I, I'm, you know, I'm fine. I land and I'm fine. Just like flying a five inch, it's no big deal. I am going to equate that to the latency of the camera. I, I cannot confirm. And if you asked me to detect which one has more latency, like just in front of me, I probably wouldn't be able to, and I, and I wouldn't even try because it doesn't matter. But in flight, my brain got more tired flying with the run cam uh, split do with it what you will that's just my experience i'm not really going to make a firm statement about whether the latency is good or, or not i generally just would say i wouldn't wouldn't race with the run cam split yes you might be doing well on time trials and whatnot but you know when you're racing you kind of learn the track and you can kind of do it with your eyes closed so you just go by timing of things you don't necessarily go by the actual responding but i feel like if you did some real testing you would find that people that use the run cam split in racing probably have a lot more mid-air collisions than people that use something else. This is purely a guess off the top of my head, and there you go, now the dogs are awake. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't disturb the video too much. All right, so the quality of the camera. The quality of the camera is good. Okay, I'm gonna move over because I hate these dogs. So the picture quality from the run cam split is very, very good, and that's the primary thing I'm gonna talk about right now. The picture looks like it's had a HDR filter applied to it, a sharpening filter applied to it, and a saturation filter applied to it. And all those things make it look better than a GoPro in 1080p. And yeah, that's I was surprised as well. I think it's probably very similar to the uh, Runcam 3, which I don't have and haven't been able to test, but the picture quality is probably very similar. If you don't like post-processing and post-editing, you're gonna get a much better picture from this this camera. If you do some post-processing and you like to be able to change your shadows and lights and colors and pull things around, the GoPro is gonna give you a much, much better picture. And on top of that, the GoPro's larger bit depth or just bigger bit depth of the video gives you kind of like really smooth gradients of colors. The Runcam split gives you kind of artifacting in the smoothness of colors like the blue of the sky, the range of the color change of the sky. It gives you this weird artifacting. So. The video quality from this thing is very good. It's not 2.7K, but it does look better than most of the other Chinese cameras in 2.7K. I would say that this is probably the best looking Chinese camera, like low cost Chinese camera that exists today. And that's that's great. It, it really is great for that because it looks, I think it looks better than the Yi at 1080p, although the Yi does some weird super view type effect, which I would prefer but it looks better than the Yi standard in 1080p with all the new uh, um, scripts for the Yi. It can look better, but 
in general, the camera looks very good. It's the best looking Chinese camera. It just doesn't have the 2.7K quality of the GoPro in SuperView, which I, which I hugely prefer. The primary complaint that I have with this camera is the field of view, particularly in the vertical direction. The horizontal field of view is fine. It could be a little bit wider, but it's fine. But the GoPro, but GoPro has made SuperView very popular, and SuperView is kind of their signature thing, their signature term. And what it means is that it's using the entire sensor, it's, which is a 4.3 sensor, and it's squashing it down into, into 69 and running it through some weird algorithm, which makes it look like it's not really distorted. It is distorted, but it makes it look like it's not super distorted. And the resulting factor of, of that kind of processing is that you get a camera that has a super wide vertical field of view so that when you place it on your on your quad at just 20 degrees which is what I usually put it on in my acro quads you can fly almost full speed forward and you can see exactly where you're going right on the horizon so it makes it look really natural to fly because now you can do flips and rolls with the camera fully centered and you can fly full speed and see where you're going and the ground looks like it's shooting past you super fast because it's looking straight down at the ground so that effect is not on this camera, and the biggest issue is that you also don't get that field of view in the FPV feed. That is very, very important. That's the primary issue with the monster camera. That's why I've been looking for a wider monster camera lens for a while now, which I found, but it also has some issues, so I'm looking for another one still. But when you don't have that wide vertical field of view, it makes it really hard to fly because you kind of have to set your quad at a certain attitude and just keep it there. Then you can't really change your pitch too much makes it a real big pain to fly. I actually prefer racing with the 4.3 cameras, the 4.3 sensors, this one, the micro, because you have a much better general all around field of view. It has a wider vertical field of view and you can fly really slow and you can fly really fast with just 45 degrees camera tilt, which makes it a lot easier to race, a lot, a lot easier to fly. The benefit of the Swift is that the FPV feed that you're going to get is much better than a 4.3 CCD sensor. Now the differences between CCD and CMOS, the, the only one that really matters to us is that a CCD has a global shutter and a CMOS has a rolling shutter. The difference between a global and a rolling shutter is that if you look at the whole sensor as a whole, a global shutter kind of takes the whole image together, the whole thing at the same time. It's like pulsing, a pulsing image. Whereas the CMOS with the rolling shutter just reads the lines. And that's the reason why you get this kind of jello effect when you're flying if you have any vibrations in your in your setup. Now with my setups I use little TPU camera mounts. I don't know if that's the reason why, but I don't really have issues with any jello. So you know, do with it what you will. I I don't have issues with jello. A lot of people do, and that's a lot of the reason why people don't like CMOS cameras. So you can expect to have some degree of jello with this camera, both in your HD feed as well as your FPV feed. Something else annoying that you're gonna have to deal with. So the camera works flawlessly. Mad kudos for that. It's super cheap, $70, $75. It gives you great quality for that money. I can't speak of the latency because in my experience, I, I just would not use it for racing. I would not use it for kind of really fine acrobatics flying. It, it's great for slow flying if you don't have a very fast quad or you just don't fly very fast. It's great, but I wouldn't use it for that. I have tried to design a frame specifically for the split to kind of hold it you know, next to the FPV cam or, or in, the mid, in the middle of the props so that it's like, you know, just the spare camera on board that's recording HD that's, you know, better than the FPV feed. Uh, I couldn't really make anything to my liking. And if I put it on top, then the frame becomes so big that it's large enough to carry a, a GoPro. So why bother with the, with the run cam split? I don't think this camera has much use. The video quality is good, but it still looks kind of cheapy and I'll talk about another issue about the video quality too, but it looks, it still looks kind of cheapy and it's really only good for like Instagram or just fun sharing with friends or, you know, just kind of like Facebook kind of short little small videos, which if that's all you're doing, that's all you care about. Perfect. Perfect for you. You know, stick it in a slow quad to have fun. You know, it's great for a three inch. If it's great in a four inch, I would highly recommend it in a four inch. I would not recommend it in a three inch. Do not build a three inch stop flying three inch just build a four take your three inch quad and put four inch arms on it it's going to be significantly better the other main issue is that it's the same it's related to the first issue the field of view because the field of view is narrower it makes you look like a worse pilot and uh <laughs> so the GoPro super view it kind of hides your fine movements when you're flying around and you'll see that in my in my video feed it looks like I'm jerking the stick around which I am because it's a three inch and it's just annoying but 
it, if I had the super view, like the true super view, it would kind of soften all my movements because when you jerk around something that has such a wide field of view, it doesn't really look like it's being moved around too much. It looks like it's moving less. So it just dulls your finger movements a little bit. That's something to consider because uh, you could look like a super smooth pilot in a GoPro, but in, in the run cam split, you just don't look that good. So you're going to have to learn to be extra smooth with the split in order to get the same kind of video quality out of it. My general consensus is that it's a great camera. It's it's you know it's not it's not not nothing's really a game changer. It's not really a game changer. If you want to use it, I would not recommend it for racing. It's really just something that's kind of almost quite there, but not quite there. I wish it had a better lens on it. There are people that have tried to put different lenses on it, but then it just makes the HD feed look weird and super duper wide, and that's not what you want either. I, I don't know if I would give it a, a, a buy rating. I, I wouldn't really recommend it for anybody for anything but just kind of slow flying or doing whatever with because the quality is just not there. I know I'm kind of a quality snob and I have you know access to GoPros and whatnot, which I lost, but whatever. Uh, it's just It's just not for me. It could be for you. It's a good product. I really, really wish that GoPro made a product like this. And in fact, they have made a product like this a couple of years back they made a GoPro they just took the GoPro apart and put the camera on a longer wire for MotoGP which they built in the cameras into the motorcycles and that product literally was the run cam split it's really unfortunate that they didn't turn it into an actual product and the reason they didn't this was like four or five years ago I think I was talking to somebody from GoPro and they told me this and the reason they didn't make it a product is because the demand wasn't there. There was, there was no use for a camera with, a, with, a, with a, the camera on a wire and the electronics somewhere else. But now there is a real, real use for it. I don't know if the FPV market is big enough for them to consider making that a real product finally. But I'm trying to talk to them and get them to make it. I'm just trying to like get a hold of one. If I could just get a hold of one and show it to everybody... I think people will go crazy over it and GoPro, I will hopefully kind of coerce GoPro into making it a real product for us because that's really the dream. The dream is to have a camera on a wire like this with the electronics somewhere else that I would make a custom frame for, but that custom frame would be a little bit smaller than the one that would carry the the run cam, or sorry, the, the, GoPro, the full size GoPro. And the camera would sit in a very housed, safe environment to fly with. And that's, that's truly the dream. Full 2.7K, full super view, hopefully 4K, 30 frame per second super view. And yeah, that's it. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to floss.